Hey everybody, this is Nicole with Topaz, and today we are here for Quick Tip Thursday. Today's Quick Tip Thursday topic is going to be selective, selectively applying styles in the new Topaz Restyle. Topaz Restyle includes our most advanced masking workflow and tool set. Uh, we introduced the tool set within Topaz Clarity, and it has come into Topaz Restyle um, as well. But I think it's even more important in Topaz Restyle because you have these edge-aware and color-aware brushes, smart feather tools, color-aware quick masks that make it really simple to only apply these styles to certain areas of your image. This is really important for certain styles that might be a little heavy-handed in um, certain areas of your image, but you really like the effect in other areas. You can quickly apply it exactly where you want. So we're going to take a look at that right now. Let's go ahead and get out of this screen. Let me show you a couple before and afters that we're going to be working on. We're going to be working on this portrait image. Here's before. I wanted to bring it into Topaz Freestyle and quickly apply a much warmer tone that really popped and really, um, I thought, warmed the image up and made it uh, better. But when I applied the, uh, the preset, or I'm sorry, the style, it really did some negative things to her skin. So I ended up taking it out of her skin, about 50% of the effect. So I still get the warming effect in her skin, but not to the degree that it originally was. So we'll take a look at that. Also, let's see here. We'll be looking at this image as well. This is definitely a highly stylized image. Here is the original. And after restyle for this one, um, when I applied the style, I really liked the color of the style uh, for the sky and really enjoyed this um, kind of very heavy-handed, uh, washed-out type of look. But when I added in some structure and detail from the basic adjustment panel, I really didn't like what happened in the sky. But with our color range masking tools, I was quickly able to get that completely out with just one quick mask. So we'll take a look at that as well. And actually, let's go ahead and take a look at this one first. I'll go ahead and take this original background image, make a quick copy, and take this into Restyle. Oh, you can tell I just did this. OK, before I uh, take this in anywhere, let me just go ahead and apply the style. I actually forget which one I used. So let's take a look at the grid really quickly. And let me choose a couple that might intrigue me here. I'm just uh, taking a snapshot basically by clicking on this little camera uh, to see which ones I might be interested in um, in using. Uh, let's see here. Not sure which one I ended up using before for that original one. So let me just scroll through and see if I can find it here. Kind of like that. Hmm. That might have been it, actually, that stark winter day preset. Ooh, and I kind of like that pearl sunset. OK, now that I've marked these, I'm just going to click on this little icon up here and look at the ones I've marked and kind of narrow it down to which one I really want to use. I don't like this one anymore. I don't like that one anymore. Let's take another look. And I am going to stick with this dark winter day preset. So I'm just going to click on that, and it will apply to my main preview image. So when I look at this, I, I, I like this washed out kind of very stark uh, preset or style for this particular image. But right away, I know that I want to come into my basic adjustment area and work with this just a little bit. You have a masking module for each tab. So we have our restyle tab with our masking module and then our basic tab with our masking module down here as well. So you can selectively take out just the style or some of your basic adjustments as well. You don't have to do both. And that's what we're going to be doing here. I do want to go ahead and see what happens. Let me amp up that saturation just a little. I like that. It warms up my desert ground here quite a bit. I like that. OK, the tone, let me take my tone or my white levels down just to bring some detail back into those whites. 
that works. And then in my detail, the one that I really want to work on is my structure. The structure is going to um, work on your larger image features. So it will, it's kind of like um, a localized exposure. So as you take this up, you'll start to notice that it might not have a great effect on certain areas of your image, but it has a really nice effect on others. So I really like what's happening with this as I take this up on my foreground and my texture within the house. But look at kind of the negative effect that's happening on the sky. It's bringing a lot of detail into the sky. Some halos are starting to form around the um, clouds. Here, let me show you that one more time. Here's before, there are structure and after. So what I want to do for this particular one is go ahead and come into my masking module and just take the effect of this basic uh, module out of my sky. Within our masking module we have all different types of tools here for you. By default when you open up your masking module you will see a white mask um, preview here in your at the top on the right hand side because it has now been put into your mask mode view. And by default, your hide brush is going to be selected. The hide brush is going to be a black brush, so you'll be painting black on white. If you want to actually switch that around, you can easily come in and can, um, invert that. So just click on your little invert icon, and you can start off with the black mask, and we could actually just paint it into our foreground as opposed to taking it out of our sky. But I am going to start with the white because I want to show you one of my favorite tools. We do have an undo and redo button here, the invert, which I just showed you, the reset, which will take it back to the default of white or take it back to the default black, whichever one you started with. I'll show you this here in just a moment. This is something that's new within Restyle. It's a copy um, mask option from another module. So if I've worked really hard on a masking within my Restyle module and I also want to use that mask within my basic module, I can come in here and say I want to copy from my Restyle. So we'll uh, take a look at that maybe in the next uh, example as well. We have three different brush options here for you. The brush options are going to be edge aware, color aware, and normal. The normal is what I call just a normal dumb brush. As you paint that across, you'll see it's just a regular brush. You can change the strength of the brush from being a one, which is full strength black, or you could go to 0.5, which will be about 50% gray. And then you have your brush size. As you take that up and down, you'll see your brush move. You also have your hardness, which controls the feathered edge of your brush, how soft those edges are. Now, as you're working within a session, if you're working really um, on two different areas and they need two different types of brushes, you can have a preset A and a preset B, and you can automatically use two brushes within your session. So it's kind of cool like that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my... Um, uh, I just press the reset button, so reset mask. We also have an edge aware brush. The edge aware brush is fantastic. You still have the same controls in below. And as long as you keep the crosshairs of your brush on the color that you want to affect, it is a very edge aware brush. As you can tell over here, I quickly just went over and I'm making sure that the, um, the effect uh, let's see here, the, I'm sorry, the crosshairs of my brush are actually on the blue that I want to affect or the sky, and it's not affecting anything else because it's not touching there uh, with the crosshairs. So the edge aware is very cool. All right, let me reset. And the color aware brush is something uh, very, um, that I really enjoy as well. It uses the same technology as the edge aware brush. So it is edge detection, except it does it by letting you pick a color first. So if I want to come in and select my eyedropper right to the right of the color aware brush, select the color of the sky, and then just start painting. I don't have to worry about um, any edges. It's just going to take that color range and allow me to take that particular effect out. So you can already see that this is a much better sky. At least in my opinion, you don't see those um, halos as much. So very cool stuff there. I'm going to go ahead and reset. We also have a gradient tool here for you. You can do a linear gradient, which is just based upon a line. As I just uh, click and drag, it will create a mask based upon that line that I just made. So you can quickly work with horizons this way. It's a great way to just make a quick 
mask. We also have a radial mask. It's going to also be based upon the point where you start, where you drag it out. It'll make a circle about that big. And then you have a reflected gradient where it is also based upon a line, but it reflects uh, against each other. So it'll allow it, you to make smaller uh, masks like you see here in the upper right. I'm going to go ahead and reset all. And we're already running out of time. These Quick Tip Thursdays are so quick. OK, uh, let's see here. The Color Range tool is one of my favorite tools. It allows for me to quickly make a mask based upon a point that I have within my image, wherever that point is uh, on my image, whatever color it's going to try to mask out that color range. So as you scroll into your image, once you click on that color range button, you scroll into your image, you'll see a little green dot appear right in the middle of your image. That's by default. It's right there when you start off. You can drag that dot exactly where you want to place it. I'm going to place it on the blue of my sky. And then I'm going to come down into my color range sliders, and I'm going to take my size all the way up. So that will increase the actual radius that it's affecting. And then I'm going to take my sensitivity down, which will allow for the color range to be expanded. So it's not as sensitive to the color. If I wanted to be very specific to where that little dot is, I can actually take my sensitivity up, and it will only work on that particular color. So you have a lot of options here to create some very cool, quick masks. So very quickly with this color range, I was able to, let me say OK, able to completely take it out of my sky, get my clouds looking a little bit better in my taste. Then I can come into my Smart Feather Tools. The Smart Feather Tools will give you the ability to soften your edges within the mask. So if I want to soften up and make this a little bit more natural of a transition between, let's say, the clouds, the whites, of my mask and the blacks, I can take my feather radius and just start to soften that up. You can see here in the upper right that it got much softer on those edges and the transition is much more natural. If I want to still have a more natural transition but still have a little bit more edge awareness than this real softness that's happening in this feathering tool, I can come down to my feather aware, which is so cool because it allows for this more softer transition, but it also brings back some of those edges. So I get that natural yet still exact cutout that I want. The mask contrast is going to um, actually determine the edge brightness. So, so as I take this up, you'll see that those edges against the black. And then the mask strength is going to um, kind of determine how hard the mask is applied to the area. So you can take this strength down if you want to open up that mask a little, which I do. And voila, I'll say OK. And here's before and after. Now if I wanted to apply this in my restyle, let's say I wanted the actual original blue of my sky, I can come up to my restyle masking module, come over to my copy icon, click on that and say I want the basic mask applied here. And it's as simple as that to bring back the original color, or I'm not, not necessarily the original color, but uh, use the same mask that you've already worked on in another image. So you can create really specific styles uh, selectively applied in your image exactly where you want it. Uh, Dave says, is there a keyboard shortcut to quickly switch between preset A and B? Yes, okay, the backslash key will toggle between brush A and B. If you want to know all of the shortcut keys, you can access your user's guide by going to the menu button on the lower left-hand corner of the Restyle interface and just clicking on User's Guide and it will pop up into your default browser and just scroll down to the very end of the User Guide and that's where you'll see the quick uh, or the shortcut keys available to you. Peter says, is there a way to adjust edge sensitivity in the edge detection brush? Uh, no, Peter, there currently is not a way to do that. Um, but there is a tip I have for you. The hardness and the brush size will help to control that edge sensitivity. As you take the brush size down, you will have more edge sensitivity um, because the, the, the brush isn't looking at so many colors within its um, within inside the brush. So as you take it down, it will become a little bit more sensitive, that brush size. But other than that, we don't have an edge sensitivity slider. 
Linda says the feathering, etc. Does it affect the photo immediately? Yes, it does. So let's um, let's do this. Let's go ahead and open up this photo of our little girl here. And I'm taking in an original background image here. I'm gonna press reset. Get it back. And I'm gonna go into our portrait collection. And I wrote down the I wrote down the preset name. It was a rusted root. So let me just go ahead and look that up. There we go, rusted root. We click on that, and as you can see, it's a, a nice pop of warmth and uh, color and saturation, everything uh, for the background. And I like the style that's coming in, and I even like what it did to her clothing a lot. However, it's way too red in her face, and the skin tone has just gone um, overboard for my particular aesthetic for this image. So for this masking, I used the uh, color, I'm sorry, the Edgeware brush. So I'm just going to quickly use that real quick. So I'm just going to take that strength down to about point. Actually, first let me take this opacity down just a little, make this a little less ruddy. There we go. OK, I've taken the style opacity down to about 82%, and now I'm going to come into the masking module within the uh, restyle masking. So here we go. I'm going to keep it on Edgeware brush and take it down to about 0.5 and just take out half of that um, effect because I still want her face to be somewhat warm to match the style. However, it's just a little too red and reddish for me in this. So I'm just going to take that out. I'm going to take the brush size down, the hardness way down, and just start painting or just start uh, going into her face, making sure to keep the crosshairs of my brush on the areas I want to affect. And I'm actually painting it all over her face and a little bit into the bangs because those were a little too red as well. I'm coming into her neck just a little bit. And you can see over on the right upper hand um, preview of my mask exactly how edgeware this can really be. I'm also going to come into her hands and take out a little of that red, bring back some of the natural color. It's really important as well. Any skin I see. OK. So I'm pretty happy here, but I noticed that there's a really there's kind of a little too much of a hard transition between the style and the mask, even at 50%. So let me show you. Here's before, here's after. It doesn't quite feel natural. And this, to me, is where the feather tool really shines. Um, so Linda, you should be able to see this happen immediately. I'm going to open up my Smart Feather. And I'm just going to take my Smart Feather radius up. And let me go ahead and go one to one so you can kind of see her this mask happen quickly here. Actually, I'll go one back. I should be able to see it a little bit better. OK, so let me go open up that mask again. And here is where we started. And as we take this feather radius up, you should start to see a more natural transition happen between the mask and the style. If I take the feather radius all the way up, the whole style comes back. But if I take it all the way down, it's a little too much. So I'm just going to go to about point, point 0.12. And now I'm going to take my feather aware just a little up as well to bring back a little bit extra of the um, detailed lines. But it's still going to be a much more natural transition between the mask and the style. Mask contrast, if I wanted to work with that, you could see that immediate difference, mask strength as well. And I'm going to kind of leave that strength where it was and say OK. And then here's before, here's after. To me, a much better uh, skin tone for her. And that is how that feather wear tool works really well. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining me for Quick Tip Thursday, and we'll be talking to you soon. Bye, everybody.